ago, San Jose won the Founders Cup. Last year, they watched the playoffs at home. Now, the Cyber Rays want back in. Three wins in their last three games gets them a coveted spot, and the postseason party could begin. Washington was all smiles a year ago with a spot in the championship game. This time, they want to win it all. The dynamic duo of Abby Wambach and Mia Hamm has been breathtaking. And the Freedom are on the brink once again of a playoff berth. Washington, San Jose next. Mia Hamm, Abby Wambach and the Washington Freedom looking for a spot in the postseason. San Jose not ready to throw in a towel just yet. Lakeisha Bean will be in the goal today. Here's how it stands. Atlanta, Boston, and Washington all will advance to the playoffs if the Freedom get a win today over San Jose. Then everybody else would be playing for that fourth and final playoff spot. Spot. And welcome to RFK Stadium. Beth Mullins along with Anson Dorrance. And Anson, for these two teams, it's all in their own hands. One week left in the season, and the coaches and players must love the fact that they control their own destiny. Well, they've got to get it done right now. Uh, San Jose has to press to get in this thing, and they've got to have personalities to step in and start to score. And I'll tell you, the critical one right now could be Tisha Venturini. She's won at every level. She's scored at every level. And let's face it, she can make a difference in the ground, on the air. I mean, it's just incredible. Even watching her celebrate is incredible. She has been hot of late, and the career numbers for Venturini Hoka will be retiring at the end of the season. She would definitely love to go out with another trip to the playoffs and perhaps another championship ring. On the other side for Washington, the youngster Abby Wambach has been outstanding. We don't look at her clearing space in the box to attack the post. We've always talked about her power. She has more than just power right now. She has subtlety and sophistication. Watch her find the seam in the defense and pound it home. This is a complete goal-scoring machine. And she teams up so well with Mia Hamm for Washington. They also get plenty of help in the midfield from German international Steffi Jones. She's in the Aflac player spotlight with the microphone today. You go first. No, you go. There's a better way to get rid of blackheads. Ouch. New Clean and Clear Blackhead Clearing Scrub has multi-action beads that clean deep and keep blackheads away. Clean and clear and under control. It's the bottom of the ninth, four to three, two on, two out for the entire season in the balance. There's no reason to hold anything back now. It all comes down to this. Just hang in there. Games don't come any bigger, and this one is going right down to the wire. The pitch, go, go, go. he got a hold of it, it's yes. gone! The Hyundai Sonata with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. When you don't miss a thing, you win. Ah! Well, when I got hurt in this work, glad I had supplemental insurance. Supplemental insurance? What's that? Half-lack. Well, even best insurance doesn't give you cash to cover things like lost pay, other expenses. This does. What does? Half-lack. Shouldn't ask about it at work. Really? And what's it called? Half-lack! Half lack. Ask about it at work. Half lack. Honey, wipe your face. Stains just aren't a big problem with the Maytag Neptune. Features like Stain Brain take the guesswork out of stain removal. And the Turbo Clean Wash System powers out tough stains. Right now, save up to $150 on Maytag washers. There's never been a better time to buy the longest lasting brand of washers available. Visit Maytag.com to find a dealer near you. Maytag, depend on us. You ready for this? I call it the Super Slammer. Don't get grandma. Get to my loop. Do the leg behind the back. Chocolate Thunder Attack. Gorilla. Head turning. Body chilling. What you feeling? Monumental turbo power, magical rim rack. Yeah. This is no place for a bandage. Till now, from Band-Aid brand comes the liquid bandage. A 
an instant waterproof seal that stays on anywhere, which helps every cut heal fast. Liquid Bandage from Band-Aid Brand. Today's game is brought to you by Hyundai. Hyundai reminds you when you get everything you want at Standard, you win. By the U.S. Soccer Foundation, proud to support the WUSA. By Aflac, ask about it at work. And by Maytag, depend on us. RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. The WUSA on PAX State for San Jose and Washington with just a week remaining in the regular season. Let's take a look at the clean and clear starting lineup for the San Jose Cyber Rays. Well, looking at it, uh, could be a uh, lineup to press. Some fresh legs out there, uh, Clemens, Anton Giovanni, and Cook. They could be running at him with this lineup. With Makisha Bean in goal and Ian Sawyers, the head coach for the Cyber Rays. With three games remaining, if they win all three, they would advance to the postseason. The clean and clear starting lineup for the Washington Freedom looks like this. And I'll tell you, this could be the front line for the United States. Uh, Mia Hamm, Abby Wambach, they both had great summers. They like playing with each other. They could be on the field for the U.S. this fall. Jackie Little will also be up top with the uh, Freedom. And Jim Gabera, the head coach, got his squad to the Founders Cup, the championship game a year ago. And now looking to clinch a spot in the playoffs and have another run at the Cup this time around. And Siri Mullenix will get the start in goal, the veteran out of the University of North Carolina. They're fighting for a spot on the United States national team as well as we get closer to April Heinrichs naming the team for the United States at the World Cup, which will begin in about a month and a half. And here we go, Washington looking to clinch a spot in the playoffs. They are in all white, San Jose in purple. And a freedom win would also secure a spot in the postseason for Boston and Atlanta as well. Beth, talk about a great match for us to be doing right now. Uh, this is the one. They're lined up differently. The Freedom are in uh, a 4-4-2, a classic 4-4-2 with Abby High, uh, Mia underneath her. And uh, the San Jose Cyber Rays are in a 4-5-1. Permits them to press by throwing their outside midfielders forward. But Mandy Clemens right now is the lone striker high. And Beth, you can see the press already. As soon as the ball was played, you saw pressure immediately. Ian Sawyers uh, said that uh, he wants to control the fate of this game, and one way he can is by pressing. So he's got uh, fresh legs out there. Neither, neither Clemens nor Cook nor Anton Giovanni played on Wednesday. I saw the game down in Carolina, and so these young kids and fresh legs should be uh, very active. Also a smart move because it allows him to bring some big guns off the bench if this initial strategy does not work. Absolutely. And Katia you can and CC able to come in. And so right now, uh, hopefully what you'll see if uh, Ian Sawyer's game plan works out is just winning balls like this early and then counterattacking immediately. Brian plays it back to Bean. The bad news for San Jose is for the fifth game in a row, Brandy Chastain not available. She is here at RFK, but not able to play, still... Uh, hampered by that quad injury and has kept her sideline for the last couple of weeks. And it looks like the line of confrontation for the cyber race is halfway between the center circle and the top of the D, although you can see Mandy Clemens there pressurizing Siri Mullinex inside her own box. So maybe they've given uh, Mandy the freedom to do whatever she wants defensively. She was signaling for her teammates to continue to come up. So we see right away the strategy there to put the pressure on even as far back as the goalkeeper. And there's a look at Brandy Chastain. The cheer on her side. San Jose looking to keep their playoff folks alive. Even if they did not win today, they would still have a shot at that fourth and final playoff spot. But certainly, they want to take care of their own business and get the W and not have to rely on other teams. 
Washington looking to counter Kelly Lindsay stepping into space for the takeaway. Lindsay, another player, along with Venturini Hope and Ann Cook, who this week announced that they too would be retiring at the end of the season for San Jose. Of course, Lindsay and Tisha were so instrumental in the inaugural season in helping the Cyber Age win the Founders Cup, and there's some big time whacking in midfield. Well, Pep, you know what's interesting? If your team decides it's going to go into a press, it becomes uh, electric. Everyone all of a sudden gets incredibly motivated, and they start going after players like this right here. Forey Bryant going in hard to elevate Mia Hamm into the air. Looking at it again, you can see her slipping her late. Mia to protect herself uh, when airborne. I'm sure she's fine. The Band-Aid injury report for Tina is out for the remainder of the year with the ACL injury. Chastain sideline along with Amanda Cromwell, who is uh, attending the wedding of Michelle Aker. Certainly uh, those of us in the soccer community would love to send along our best wishes to Michelle today. And uh, the Band-Aid injury report, another knee injury, this one to Emmy Barr for Washington. Mia Hamm will come back into the game after coming over to the sideline quickly. Unfortunately, six of the eight teams in the WUSA have lost major stars this year to knee injuries. And for a few of the teams, more than one major star out with an ACL injury. Beth, this has been the absolute worst year for uh, bad injuries. And without the depth they've had, it's put a lot of teams in jeopardy. Uh, Philadelphia charge in particular. It was good to see uh, for Philadelphia last week. Uh, our heartfelt welcome back to Kelly Smith, along with Heather Mitz and uh, Pavlina Skazna, all able to get back into the lineup for the charge, who have been decimated this year with the injuries. And it's been so tragic uh, for Kelly Smith. What an extraordinary player. All of us would love to see her playing an entire season. And she's been riddled with injuries every season, it seems. And the reports, too, out of Southern California are a hasty rehabilitation for Shannon McMillan, who is trying to get back into shape to play with the World Cup team for the United States. And by all reports, she is far ahead of schedule in her return from an ACL injury earlier this summer. Now the free kick, Michelle French putting it into the area. Steffi Jones heads it out. Jones and Stacker have been so instrumental shoring up the midfield for this freedom side this season. Lindsay Stacker, of course, a player coming back from an ACL injury a year ago. Deflected down by Ham and a throw-in coming up for San Jose. Beth, you can see the pressing is already having an impact. It's hard for the Washington Freedom to play in their comfortable possessional rhythm. So the fresh legs, I think, so far have proven a, a great strategy for Coach Ian Sawyers coming into this game. Hard to get anything going when you've got somebody in your face at all times. The foul will go against San Jose. Let's take a look now at our AFLAC trivia question of the day. Mia Hamm's 11 assists this season are a new single season record for Washington. Who previously held the single season assist record for the Freedom? We'll have the answer for you in the second half with our AFLAC duck joining us. Come on, Tenshi! Abby Wambach trying to play it uh, back to Jackie Little. Gary Moore gets ahead on it. There's an opportunity here for Mandy Clemens. Her team has struggled scoring this year. They've competed with their defense, and here's her chance to demonstrate that uh, she should be given more minutes. She came over the trade with Philadelphia this year. Mia Hamm looking to go to work on Lindsay. And last touch by Mia, and a goal kick coming up. Mia does not like the call at all. Hair to the Kelly Lindsay judge. keeping her feet moving quickly and then a perfectly timed slide. Actually, she uh, didn't make it. Obviously, Mia's upset. 
but certainly a good environment for Meehan to take on. She's quicker than Kelly Lindsay. No question from that look from me and some of the looks we've seen from other players, this is just as important as any international that they're shooting up for. The WUSA Founders Cup becoming one of the major prizes in international soccer. These two teams fighting for a spot in the playoffs. This foul will go against Skyler, though, so a free kick coming up. It's interesting, the soccer purists are probably saying, well, how do you press in a 4-5-1 with one front runner? Well, you can, because what it gives you is the luxury to let your flank midfielders go forward to attack and win possession. Because you still have three midfielders in the middle. French with the left foot looking for Venturini Hope. Jones again up to get ahead on it. Is controlling an opportunity in the area. That one played just wide by Diane Alligich, who had her first career goal against Carolina on a Wednesday night. And look at that, that's Mia Ham digging all the way back to prevent that shot. In fact, it's interesting talking to uh, Coach Jim Gabera before the game. He's trying to figure out a way to leave Mia high, but she's so responsible defensively, she's always running back to win possession for her team. Corner kick, French will take it, looking for a post. Abby Wombach back in the area to head that one clear. Tracked down by Ann Cook. Cookie tries to play it back in front, ricochets off of Steffi Jones. Alligich, the chip shot in front. And Venturini Hope whistled for the bump on Grubb. There is Jen Grubb, she continues to impress. It's now 61 consecutive matches and over 5,400 minutes. She has not missed a minute for the Freedom in three seasons. Collision there between Kelly Lindsay and Abby Wambach. They're punishing Lindsay for it. against average. She's got four shutouts on the season. She's been a bit of an Iron Woman in goal. Over 5,000 minutes she's been in the net for the Cyberies. This is her 57th game in a San Jose uniform. She's played more minutes in goal than any keeper in WUSA history. Now Anton Giovanni, one of those young, fresh legs. It's interesting, uh, Beth, this is a game uh, that uh, lacks some composure, but it certainly doesn't lack passion. And you would expect that at this point. Uh, the losers pretty much uh, start to go home now. Just a week left in the regular season, two or three games. For everyone except New York, they have one left. And they could be eliminated from contention. In front, Mandy Clemens trying to turn on it. Kerry Sanchez, and Mullenix is there with the save. Nifty little nutmeg by Sanchez there on the end line. She's had a tremendous season for the Cyber Rays. Her energy and confidence 1v1 on the flank. No better example than what we just witnessed against uh, one of the top defenders in the league. Sanchez came over in a draft day trade with Boston this year. Back Goldie getting in. Her energy right now is tremendous. You can see this right now. She's got the space here, and she takes it. Look at her angle on goal. Her strike is very clean. Just misses the post. Keisha extending to protect that side of the goal. Dean anchoring the second best defense in the league this 
Berkshire behind Atlanta. The beat have been incredible defensively this season. And this is the story and the game, Beth, of uh, the Washington Freedom Attack. Can they break the extraordinary San Jose Cyberies defense? So that's the... That's the battle. The, the best offense and the second best defense. Steffi Jones at the midfield stripe. Jen Grubb plants it forward. Let's check in now with Steffi Jones pregame. This is Aflac Turf Talk. Come on. Three. Nothing. No goal. Are you going to no, score for me? No. no. <laughs> Hey, Jen, if I do, you're the first one I'm going to come to, okay? You guys, right to start. Freedom fans looking for that reunion of Jones and Grubb. She has uh, had such an impact on this Washington team in their incredible turnaround last year and carrying over into this season. It's a completely different team. Midway through the year last year when Jones arrived, me and Ann came back from injury. And Kerry Moore started man marking. That was the pivotal turnaround for this franchise. I can remember the impact of Steffi Jones because what we had with the Washington Freedom was a lot of nice pieces, but nothing seemed to hang together well. And all of a sudden, uh, Steffi Jones comes in and they start to develop the ball through midfield and all kinds of positive things happen from there. Looking for Ham, trying to make a run up the right side. Mia still, still working the uh, referee over there. You know, it's got to be exhausting for Mia Ham. First of all, she has to play and score all the goals. Then she's got to instruct all the referees. I mean, does her job ever end? Venturini Hope playing it wide to Kerry Sanchez. An opportunity. And Little almost put it into her own goal, but able to keep it out of there. Unbelievably dangerous attack. I don't know how that wasn't cleared into the goal. You're going to see this excellent ball through. Perfectly timed run. Great angle on the goal. Great first touch. Ball's bent across. How the heck did she not volley that into the goal? Wonderful skill there by Skyler Little under tremendous pressure. So now Michelle French with the corner kick. The Cyberace continue to apply the pressure. We got a track in here! That was a couple of former Tar Heels getting together on that run with Venture and Hoke and Sanchez. And there's Mullenix, another Tar Heel in goal. Venturini Hope saves in front. Oh my gosh, world-class strike, world-class save. San Jose continuing to press forward. I'll tell you, this is some amazing stuff. And this is what has set Tisha Venturini apart her entire life, is this kind of stuff in the attacking box. That's acrobatic. That's along the lines of her goal celebration in the tees. What a wonderful strike. Equally impressive save from Siri Mullinex. This is great action. Big play there by Mullinex. One, two, one, two. Free kick now for the Freedom. No score here in the 18th minute at RFK Stadium. Ham playing it in front, looking for Wombach over Abby's head, but she pushed off on Brian first. The story went down. Today's game is brought to you by New Passion Pink Venus from Gillette. Reveal the goddess in you. By American Legacy Foundation, building a world where young people reject tobacco and anyone can quit. By McDonald's, proud to sponsor the WUSA. And by Clean and Clear, for clean, noticeably clear, beautiful skin. Clean and Clear, and under control. San Jose in purple, Washington in white. Wombach tries the quick strike. Being able to gobble it up. You know, she didn't get it, but it was a good decision. Striking that early. Bean wasn't all the way back on her line. Could have caught her out of position. 
Great idea there by Wambach to try to get up one. challenge for the freedom right now is under this high pressure defense it looks like all over the field can they play their possessional game can they create something and spring their two world-class strikers up front Mia Hamm and Abby Wambach Hamm and Stacker good hustle there from Betsy Barr to break it up we talked about this before Beth the only team that consistently presses is the Atlanta beat and you can see their success I've wondered why more teams don't press obviously it takes a lot out of the team but you can see with the depth of some of these rosters it can have an impact Atlanta in first place in the WUSA they are the all-time winningest team over the three-year history of the league looking to advance to the playoffs both Atlanta and Boston perhaps uh, rooting for Washington today. If the Freedom win, all three of those teams would have a spot in the postseason. And then it would be a battle for the fourth and final spot, as well as home field advantage. It would go to the top two teams. Nice composure just then from Sanchez. Great ball from Venturini in. Well driven by uh, Clemens across. Let's take a look now at the Metrex Player of the Week. And it is Carolina's Venus James. She scored two consecutive goals in a 21-minute span, leading the Kurds to a 3-1 win over Philadelphia last week. She has now scored four goals in her last six games since replacing the injured Danielle Fotopoulos in the lineup. Venus James of Carolina, the Metrex Player of the Week. And actually, Beth, she had scored another one on Wednesday. It was called back uh, because of a controversial offsides call against the Cyber Rays. Look at that Venturini using the referee as a board there. Very sophisticated. Now, at North Carolina, how much time in the preseason do you spend in negotiating with officials uh, and using officials uh, to your benefit as, as players out there? <laughs> We've seen that twice. <laughs> Well, you can see uh, you know, Mia Hamm discusses things with officials, and Tisha Venturini uses them as walls. Wombach tried to play it back across. Lindsay cleans it up. Jackie Little. Of course, the Little Sisters playing together for Washington. Betsy Barr on an opportunity today to play against her older sister, Emmy Barr, who's out with the knee injury for D.C. Because of the pressure, the Washington Freedom have to play a lot quicker. It's taking them out of their traditional possessional rhythm, but to be honest, they're starting to break the press a bit. They're starting to string some stuff together. Probably one of two factors involved, or maybe both. Maybe the uh, cyber rays are fatiguing a bit, and maybe the freedom is adapting now to the quicker pace of the game. Clemens continuing to put pressure on that back line. Now the ball over the top looking for Mia Hamm. Mia quickly double teamed. Sliding tackle made by Michelle French. Venturini Hope has Clemens running with her. Sanchez making a run in the middle. Clemens, 1v1 with Grubb. Now it's the rookie. Betsy Barr turning it back inside, firing. Knocked down in front. Sandra Minner, the German international, in the way. I'll tell you, they continue to impress. That was a great counterattack. Maybe Mandy Clemens could have played it a bit earlier. She had Sanchez running on the right flank. 
but still another great series for the Cyber Rays. Ian Sawyers, uh, the head coach for the San Jose Cyber Rays, joining us now with the headset down on the sideline. Ian, is this what you were hoping for with this high-pressure style early on? You've had some terrific chances. Yeah, a goal would have been nice, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Always would be. <laughs> Ian, this is exciting to watch, and uh, not just the fact they're playing a wonderful high-pressure defense, but the counterattacks have been devastating. Yeah, Mandy gives us a little different element than Katcha. Um, you know, she's she's a very willing runner, and she'll she'll chase some lost causes there. And I think Katcha prefers the ball with her feet, so I think it's it's working into our style right now. And if we can capitalize. And then we'll be smiling. Well, Ian, this is certainly very exciting for all of us watching. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot, guys. Ian Sawyers, the head coach for the Cyber Rays. Scoreless right now with Washington in the 24th minute. Just one week remaining in the regular season. A Washington win would secure a spot for three teams, Atlanta, Boston, and Washington. And now Mandy Clements in front just missed it the connection right now between Venturini and Clemens is like two sisters out there Venturini is finding Clemens look at this right into a seam great touch here by Mandy to get in perhaps she could have done better on the finish goes wide left but a wonderful chance here these are the layups that Ian's just pulling his hair out about because that should have been in the back of the net it's the lowest scoring team in the league, but certainly not for lack of chances. This has been their Achilles heel all season. The opportunities are there, but not finding the back of the net. A foul will be called on Tisha in the area. Washington and San Jose, no score as we move into the 26th minute at RFK Stadium here in Washington, D.C. The WUSA on PAX. Beth Mullins along with Anson Dorrance, San Jose in all purple. Washington in their all white jerseys. Next week, we will have the freedom once again as they travel to San Diego in the season finale. Keisha Bean on her line makes the stop. Just a week left in the regular season. Four teams will advance to the WUSA semifinals. Three of them can secure a spot pending the outcome of this game. Only Philadelphia has been eliminated. The New York Power will be watching closely tomorrow night when Carolina visits San Diego. If San Diego beats Carolina, then that would eliminate the New York Power. But uh, all the other teams right now still with life. Everybody trying to get to Founders Cup 3, which will be on August 24th out of Torero Stadium in San Diego. San Jose winning the inaugural season. The Carolina Courage, the defending Founders Cup champions. Now a bit of possession for the Washington Freedom. They've pinged it around a bit here now. Skyler Little looking for Jackie Little. She was held up by Michelle French. There's a dangerous spot to accept a free kick from with Wombach out there. chance there by Kelly Golbiowski to take the volley first time, try to put something on the frame. Golbiowski already named to the Australian national team that will be playing in the World Cup. She's got some good qualities. That the first couple steps is very good. And actually, she takes balls out of the air well. Mia Hamm trying to get around Kelly Lindsay, a corner kick coming up. She will team up with Diane Alligich of San Jose, another member of that Aussie national squad. Now Mia Hamm fixing the microphone for us over there in the corner. <laughs> a lot of good headers. Jones, Sacker, Wombach. Bean may have 
have gotten a piece of that to push it through the other side and another corner kick coming up for the freedom. Well, we got some good jumpers for San Jose as well. Corey Bryant, Venturini. Katie's post, that would be Anton Giovanni guarding the far post. Michelle French hugging the near post. There is Wombach looking for her 12th goal of the season. There's Anton Giovanni. Looking for Wombach. Abby able to knot it down. Still loose and Bean corrals. Second in the league in goals scored behind Dodney Meldrin, who scored two more last night. While Maren Minor has three assists in Boston's win over New York, three to two. The thing you're going to like about this is look at Abby Wambach above the crowd. You can see her elevate. In case there was any question about her ability in the air, she separated herself. sort of glitching from the focus of trying to keep it on the frame rather than being loose and just stepping into it. I think she was already thinking about running to hug Jen Grubb that she promised <laughs> that she would go to her first if she scored. Steffi has a one goal on the season to go along with three assists in the midfield. Lindsay will take the free kick. Looking for that front row. Not it on by Clemens. Venturini Hoke almost able to sneak in behind Moore. Both sides with some good opportunities here in the first half. Neither able to find the back of the net yet. Take a look now, Anthony, at our superstat tracking the duo of Wombach and Ham. Well, let's see how we're going to break down the defense. Is it going to come off crosses, off dribbles, off the direct balls into the attack? So looking at it right now, Mia and Abby have gotten in once directly off a cross. Wombach has tried it. Let's see if they get on the dribble. Remember that time uh, she was stopped, Mia, on a run down the right side? Well, let's see if either Mia Ham or Abby Wombach can get in that way. So we'll be tracking this stuff for you. There are 53 points. The second best combo in the league behind Minor and Melgren of Boston. Abby and Mia have combined for 19 goals on the season. And both are jeopardizing Abby's single season points mark of 30 points, which she established a year ago. And as you talked about, uh, early on in the show, Anson, very possibly those two could be teaming up for the United States national team at the World Cup. Well, they're certainly a great complement to each other. Playing together all summer has made a big difference for their chemistry, and they offer different things. You don't want to present the same kind of forward to an opponent. And Abby Wambach and Mia Hamm have enough differences to make uh, them a thorn in any defensive side. The United States will start their World Cup defense right here at RFK Stadium on September 21st against Sweden. And they'll follow that up in the round-robin competition against Nigeria and North Korea. And now Little in the area. Play on, says the referee. Great duel there on that ball served in over the top. You can 
see now the great attack against the great defense and the individual duels stacking up one after another. Golbiowski with Barr on her. Now Mia. Back to Minner. She tries in front. Punched out by Bean, who had to run over Michelle French to get to the ball. Golbiowski settles. Golbiowski tries the end line. And a goal kick coming up for Bean. Well, if you don't think this is a contact sport, here is a defender being smacked by her own goalkeeper in order to preserve the shutout. And look at this confrontation here. Ball off the chest of Jackie Little. And to Giovanni winning it, preventing the ball getting in. Great duels all over the field right now, Beth. Wombach well, looking for Mia Hamm. Corey Bryan defending. Mia lost a shoe. Actually, Corey Bryan did. Mia lost her footing. to watch and listen to the crowd, and so any time Mia touches it close to that penalty area. Well, this is further right proof, up. well, further proof of, of Mia, you know, faking people out of their shoes, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. Although Thori seemed to be in pretty good position at the time. She's still working on the shoe, though. <laughs> The WUSA is proud to support the American Legacy Foundation as part of Legacy's Circle of Friends program. The WUSA stands with women who are trying to quit smoking and will make a donation to Legacy for every goal scored during the season. Scoreless thus far in the 35th minute here in Washington. And the foul will be called on San Jose, so a free kick coming up for the Freedom. Cook decking Lindsey Stacker on this one to set up the free kick. And we've got the Wom back out here. There's Abby. She's wide left. Stephanie Jones is wide right. The wall in front for the Cyber Rays. Here's what Lakeisha Beam was facing. Ball was driven, smacked actually pretty decently. Not low enough, obviously. Beam, the 26-year-old out of Notre Dame, still in the mix for a spot on the World Cup team, although it looks like the United States will keep only two goalkeepers. Beam, Mullenix, and Brian Asturi of Atlanta all spent time with the national side this year. Interesting, too, on the free kicks. Mia Hamm, the last couple of weeks, says she's been disappointed with how she's been handling them. So Jen Grubb has taken some of the uh, dead ball kicks. Minner taking that last one. Of course, Mia scored on one last week after Grubb had missed on a PK against San Diego in the win. Well, Beth, all three of those players uh, smacked the ball beautifully. Grubb might have the most powerful strike. Mia might have among the most accurate. And I haven't seen enough of a minute to judge, but certainly if they've selected her, she must be pretty good as well. Clemens moves it back to Betsy Barr. Steffi Jones trying to knock it loose and does. Bobiowski has Ham and Wombach up top. Too many touches right now out of Golbiowski and earlier out of Jackie Little. Jackie Little actually had Mia Ham in on the right, took an extra touch, and then lost the scene. Ham to Wombach. Abby trying to get around. Kepiersi goes to the left and right at B. Good 1v1. Wombach taking on, getting the strike off. A powerful strike, unfortunately, for Wombach right at the... Uh, Lakeisha Bean, the nice touch there to get in. Powerful strike. Mia Hamm has it again. Playing it wide to Little. 
Tuttle across. Golbiowski, far side, playing it back in front. Little settles, tried to get it over to Ham. Anton Giovanni tracked it back to steal it. The Washington Freedom have broken the press, and now they have the riding time earlier in the game. The San Jose Cyber Rays were on top, but now the Freedom have ground it up. And now they've been pressing forward. You can see the energy sapped a bit, Beth, from the uh, press of the Cyber Rays. And this, of course, is the price you pay if you come out with that kind of juice. Taking over the momentum of this match here in the first half. Now in the uh, coming up to the 40th minute. Skyler Little to Jackie Little trying to cross. And it was over the end line for a goal kick. Well, last night Boston beat New York 3-2. These are the other games coming up this weekend. Tonight, Atlanta at Philadelphia. As Atlanta can secure a playoff spot. They are interested in home field advantage as well. And then tomorrow, a big one, Carolina at San Diego. The winner of that game would win the season series. Chested down by Bean. And of course, San Diego has one less game to play than everyone else except New York. With that San Diego team, it's been so interesting day literally they are five one and one when they play in the daylight which they will be tomorrow one five and six at nighttime now abby wombat over to mia ham off the crossbar headed in by gobiowski redirected by mia for the goal from beginning to finish. Mia Hamm with her ninth goal of the season. And that puts her back on top of the scoring table. And gives the freedom the one nothing lead. They have not lost this year when they have scored first. Mia trying to get some more. for San Jose. Katie Barnes has come on replacing Anton Giovanni. Once again, Brandy Chastain not available with the quad injury today, but Katya and CC can still come in off that bench for Ian Sawyers. 1-0 Washington. On an afternoon when a win gets them a spot in the playoffs, it also secures a spot for Boston and Atlanta. And then the four remaining eligible teams will be battling for the fourth and final spot. With San Diego then having the inside track. Well, the game is turned. It doesn't mean that Ian Sawyers has no weapons left. He can still bring the uh, traditional starters on to try to change the flow and direction of this game. Back to Barnes. It was impressive, though, watching the Washington Freedom patiently try to break the press. They finally did. They started to basically have territorial imperatives. And then a wonderful uh, series in the back with Jen Grubb winning the ball but not panicking, knocking it up to Wambach. And then, of course, we saw the, uh, the final result of that series. You know what else was interesting, Anson? After Ham hit the crossbar, she did not 
put her head down, did not fall down in disbelief that it didn't go in. She stayed right in front and was right there when Golbiowski played it back to her. Beth, absolutely. We're coming up on the Hyundai Halftime Report. We head into the home stretch for the 2003 WUSA season. We've got a musical tribute to some of the best action thus far. Plus, we'll hear the happenings down on the field through the microphone of Steffi Jones with our AFLAC player spotlight. That's all coming up on the Hyundai Halftime Report. Mia Hamm with the goal to give Washington the one nothing lead. For Mia, her ninth of the season. And her second goal in as many games after she went through a one-month stretch without scoring. Now Katie Barnes trying to get around down the end. Taken away by Little. Great tackle there by Little. Just swept it from Katie Barnes' feet. Pops it up, French. Now Betsy Barr. Across midfield, looking for Barnes. Skyler Little is there. Her sister Jackie into space. Mia Hamm running out. She's outside. There comes Mia again. Wombat all alone in the middle. Abby Wombat. great ball that she missed and now Mia's returning the favor Abby misses this left I'll tell you though still both players trying to find each other looking for seams their attack is is devastating finishing right now isn't but boy the chances they create for each other Kerry Sanchez taken away by Moore the stoppage time at the end of the first half. And plays it back to Jones. Nice shield there by Steffi Jones. Could sense the pressure, put her body between the ball and the defender. Kept it for her team. After the initial uh, rush of about 20 minutes or so by San Jose, Washington has taken over this one. And now all the chances down at the freedom end. Well, McDonald's and Powerade love to see that winning smile, and there were plenty of smiles. The Washington goal, Cam Golbiowski, one back, all a part of the score. McDonald's and Powerade love to see that winning smile. And that will do it for the first half of play here at RFK Stadium. Our score in Washington, 1-0, the Freedom with the lead over the Cyber Rays. Coming up next, it's the Hyundai Halftime Report. Stay with us. Ooh, scary. Yeah, and I bet they didn't have that insurance back then. What? Half flat. It gives your mommy money if she's sick and can't work. What the? Yeah. I want. Pay attention. To what? I want. Half lack. Ask about it at work. My friend Valeska was totally surprised when I showed Your up. Your eyes look amazing. <laughs> she loved my new blue eyes. They were Active two colors. Color contacts? Oh, yeah. She didn't want to at first, but I said, trust me, you won't even feel them. Valeska has dark brown eyes, so the eye doctor said that to change her color up, she'd need a really good lens. The blues, the greens looked phenomenal, but the warm honey is totally her color. Wow. Acuvue 2 colors are so much fun. Everyone should do it. Tell your friends. Go to Acuvue.com to learn how you can try a free pair of Acuvue 2 colors brand contact lenses. Put them big masks up, y'all. Uh, come on. Come on. Somebody say, to all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. Come on. Beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. Pickles, onions, on a separate cheese bun. Pickles, onions, on a separate cheese bun. Come on. To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, And as a matter of fact, uh, to be exact, uh, nothing needs like a Big Mac. Ready for this? For the Super Slammer, Dunk your Grandma. 
Strip to my loot. Scoot the legs behind the back. Chocolate thunder attack. Gorilla head turning. Fire chilling. What you feeling? What is it about pink that makes you feel so good? Introducing Venus from Gillette in a scandalous new color, Passion Pink. Each refill has three blades and soft cushions that give you the closest shade. So close, your skin stays smoother, longer which makes it easy for every goddess to reveal her beauty. New Passion Pink Venus. Reveal the goddess in you. Welcome to the Hyundai Halftime Report, brought to you by Hyundai. Hyundai, more features, more value, and America's best warranty. Halftime at RFK Stadium here in Washington. Time now to take a look at this week in the WUSA. Player spotlight, Steffi Jones, Affleck. Ask about it at work. Hey, let's do this. Let's talk, okay? Oh, Steffi, come on. Three. Nothing, no go. Are you going to no, score for me? No. Hey, Jen, if I do, you're the first one I'm going to come right. to. Okay? <laughs> Mini, hau rein, ja? Die machen nichts gegen dich. Okay? Ja, ich guck mal, ich will ja, ich hab ja gesagt, ich würde so gern. A multilingual Affleck player spotlight with the turf talk today. One nothing Washington. We've got more on the Hyundai halftime report after this. Welcome back to the Hyundai Halftime Report, the Freedom Jerseys, the Mia Ham jersey in particular, a hot item here at RFK Stadium. They've got the 1-0 lead on a Mia goal in the first half. Let's take a look now at the uh, highlights. San, San Jose Anson has some chances, including this terrific one from Venturini Hope. Well, this is a highlight. Look at this. It gets parallel, smacks it. The Mullinex is there, but still, what a great effort here by Venturini in a crowded box. This is classic uh, Wombach Ham teaming up here. This should have been finished. Golbiowski's there. She redirects it. Mia Ham is there to finish in a seam. One zip, and it's appropriate. They broke the press. San Jose early was all over them. Fighting hard, putting maximum pressure. You can see from their effort, uh, San Jose's fouls, 12 to 5. They were going after them, but then Washington was composed. They had a 10 to 5 shot differential, so the margin one zip bet is appropriate. Mia Hamm with the goal in the 41st minute, her ninth of the season. When we come back on the Hyundai Halftime Report, the Hyundai Kicks coming your way. Welcome back to the Hyundai Halftime Report here at RFK Stadium in Washington. Playing to make some noise about for the Freedom fans. They've got the 1-0 lead on a goal by Mia Hamm in the first half. Well, at each nationally televised game, two fans have three chances to kick through their choice of three boxes to win some money. Robin Herleman of Olean, New York, a 15-year-old 
is up first. She's a big Abby Wambach fan who's from Central New York as well. She gets 500 on the first, and the second one is through as well. Next up is 38-year-old Teresa Fodel out of Clarksville, Maryland, a big Mia Hamm fan. And her first kick just misses out. Teresa going for the money. And this is why. That's the Hyundai Halftime Kickers. Hyundai, proud charter sponsor of the WUSA. The standings in the league right now. Atlanta in first, followed by Boston. Washington looking to get into a tie for second. San Diego and New York on the bubble. San Jose on the outside looking in. Four teams will advance to postseason play. And here is what's left. Atlanta has three matchups. Washington with just two remaining, both on the road. Boston has th uh, three games, actually two games left after they beat New York last night. And then San Diego with two left. It could come down to that last matchup with Washington. Now to Torero Stadium to decide the fourth team in to the playoffs. And there's a look at the remaining schedules for New York, San Jose, and Carolina as well. All those teams, Anson, still with an opportunity to get into the postseason. Well, they do, and what does it is these this three points for a win. With three points for a win, you can be vaulted from nowhere uh, to the top or the playoff race. Just seven teams right now, or seven points, rather, from seventh to second place. When we come back, we'll head into the Cyber Race locker room with Coach Ian Sawyers after this. A moment ago, here's Ian Sawyers in the Cyber Race locker room. All right. We've got to make sure that we get quality service into the box. Quality service. Do what you're good at and trust your instincts. All right, because it's going to get really tight down the wire here. You're going to get nothing from the referees, believe me. Not here, not today, not in Mia Hamm's home. You're not going to get anything. All right, so play things intelligently, play them cautiously, but play them with positive instincts. I like that, but what he's trying to do is to prepare his team for possible frustration from the referees and letting them know that, listen, regardless of what happens, you're still in this thing and let's go after it. And the other good piece of coaching that you liked, Anson, was the fact that they pressed early, but knowing they could come in with some big guns, and that is exactly what they've done, bringing in Katya and Cece to start out the second half. And now the hope is that all the running that Mandy Clemens did and Ann Cook did for them to put pressure on the freedom has worn them out a bit and now with fresh legs back in with CC and Katya maybe they can turn the game free kick here for the cyber is there is Katya and CC will take it the two Brazilians coming on looking for Katya right away Mullenix punches it out settled by Barr back to CC now Diane Alingich Washington not making any changes at the half. It's interesting. Let me comment on this Siri Mullenix punch a minute ago. Uh, Coach Bill Palladino, who's my assistant at the University of North Carolina and also assists April Heinrichs with the full national team, are starting to become convinced that in a crowd it might be safest for our goalkeepers to punch. And they're thinking this now from reviewing national team tape over the years of how often our goalkeepers go up in a crowd, try to catch it, don't catch it. And then all of a sudden this ball is sprung and live in the box that opponents have finished. So this might be a turn in uh, what we start to recommend with our elite goalkeepers. Here comes a corner kick for San Jose. Mullenix again looking to punch it out as she goes up. So good point there, Anson. She is definitely buying into that. Let's revisit how Washington has been attacking with Ham and Wambach. And you know, it's interesting. They've gotten in directly. You can see the direct numbers there. Three with Mia, two with Abby. And it's indicative not just of the San Jose Cyber Race pressing, but also the fact they've got people like Grubb in the back that can serve that ball to get them in. And that they only have one player that can match up with their speed in the back. And that's Tori Bryan. CC. Bar, the rookie out of Portland. Playing a wide to Michelle French, also a port former Portland pilot. Redirected by Katya. Siri Mullenix is there. Now that's excellent footwork. 
mistake a lot of goalkeepers make on any kind of shot or header as they start their launch immediately. If Siri had started to dive on the strike, she would not have reached that ball. Her feet got her over there. That's an excellent save. Katia has struggled throughout much of the season, but in the last couple of weeks has started to come on. She had the game-winning goal on Wednesday night at Carolina. And Beth, I was there. It was a snap header. There was no question about it. She smacked it in with power. It was a wonderful goal. Quick restart for Washington. Wombach. And a goal kick for Bean. Well, today's game is being brought to you by Band-Aid Brand. By Hyundai. Hyundai reminds you when you get everything you want at standard, you win. By Charles Schwab, proud sponsor of the WUSA. And by Powerade, refueling the WUSA. Just underway in the second half, Washington leading 1-0 on a Mia Hamm goal in the 41st minute. They had another terrific opportunity moments later, and Abby Wambach pushed one just wide. The first 20 minutes controlled by the Cyberes, and then the rest of the way in the first half, it was Washington controlling the run of play. So the Cyberes counter out of the locker room by subbing in Katya and Cece. Venturini Hope looking for Sanchez wide right. Headed out by Sandra Minner. And Golbiowski. Tori Bryant pushes forward, using her body to keep freedom away. I'll tell you, the pace and speed of play of this game right now is real class. Abby Wombach cuts it back inside. Wombach looking far post. Steffi Jones heads it down. Hey, right on. And it dribbles in for a goal. this redirect here into the middle. Ball's bounced in. Mia's on a full run. She doesn't catch it, but she sends it in the right direction. It's in the back of the net, and now there's separation. Another look at this, and you can see Mia didn't really hit it the way she wanted to, but the accuracy was there. It rolls in lower right, 2-0, Washington Freedom. Mia Hamm with her ninth and tenth goals of the season. Washington up 2 nothing, And has the freedom closer to clinching a spot in the playoffs, along with Boston and Atlanta. Mia trying to run on for some more. Bryant able to play it back to Bean. A little in traffic. Little lets it go. Microphone. And you could hear the microphone being <laughs> crushed when Mia jumped into her arms. Once again set up by the run from Abby Wombach down that left side before turning it back in. Now Stacker trying to get ahead on it to clear it out of there before Venturini Hope could get to it. Actually, uh, Tisha Venturini Hulk won that one, but because Stacker was right there with her, had a hard time putting it on the frame. After a couple of games as the stealth attacker, Lindsay has reverted back to her stealth whacker ways. Well, she's a she's just a, a great player. She can play anywhere as a high school kid. She was an attacking midfielder, so she's used to scoring goals. Obviously, the evolution of most players when you go from one level to the next is to keep moving back. And so they're, they've dropped her one line, basically from attacking center half to holding midfielder. 
and a good lesson learned for anybody who is sitting out with a major injury. Lindsay didn't just sit there and watch. She sat on the sideline and paid attention to what was going on. And when we talked to her early in the season, she said, I have made a huge leap in my leadership and in my ability to read what everyone else is doing because of my time over on the bench watching the game. That's an excellent point. And she's the sort of person that would do that. She's plugged into every team she's played on. Much of last year to the due to the ACL injury. Jones the header over to Stacker. Wombat to Goldiowski. Trying to play it back up top. San Jose in a hole now, down two nothing. The Cyber Rays would not be eliminated with the loss. They have two games remaining next week. Unfortunately for the Cyber Rays, they are against the top two teams in the league. They play Atlanta and Boston. Said Jerry Moore is having a quietly excellent game. She just won that ball a moment ago from Katya. And she always manages to get her foot or head stuck in somewhere. There she is again. Very underrated player, but has had a great impact for the freedom. Big guns are back. CC since Pratinha has left, I think is the leading scorer now in that uh, period while uh, Pratinha has been trying to recover. Ham looking for the hat trick. Mia Ham. Another goal. Three on the day for Mia. The second hat trick of the season for the Freedom as the rain starts to fall. Extraordinary athleticism. You would think that, you know, Mia Hamm uh, would start to age and maybe slow down a bit. If that's an example of her aging, look at this. Still has the acceleration and speed that made her famous when she was a young girl. Still has the depth touch to get it in the back of the net. Yes. Her first WUSA hat trick. Mia Hamm Three goals today for the Freedom. Two of them here in the last six minutes. She called me the other day, Beth, and told me that, you know, this Olympics might be uh, her last hurrah. And I basically told her not if I could help it. Um, <laughs> and you can see there's still a lot left in her game. And she'd have the World Cup this fall and then the Olympics next summer in Greece. Players have talked about perhaps that being their last major international competition. The uh, fivesome that goes back to the 91 World Cup. Mia, Brandy, Julie Foudy, Christine Lilly, Joy Fawcett. Of course, Mia, another player that is back from a knee injury. Make a comment on Sandra Menner. Just a minute ago, she got the ball, started to run out of the back. She saw no one was high in front of her. And a comment uh, that Coach Jim Gabero was making to me about her before the game. A thing he loves about having her in the lineup is her decision making and composure. And sure enough, she saw nothing ahead. She cut it back. She started it over. Very composed player. Lindsey Stacker comes off for Washington, replaced by Casey Zimney. The defender out of Rochester, New York. So Stacker's day is done. And what looks pretty good right now for the Washington Freedom, up 3-0. San Jose looking to counter. Play back to Mullenix. Well, certainly, it's in the questions arising last year, how would Mia respond to the injury? Would she come back as strong as she had been in the past? 
It certainly looks that way. She's the leading scorer in the lead this year. Wombach trying to add to the lead. Here we go, here we go. Mia spent a lot of time in the off-season training. And actually says she had to learn how to run again. And that has been a big help to her game. My uh, running techniques, my bio, you know, my mechanics for running are so much better than they ever were. And now when I sprint, I feel I'm faster, but with less work. And that's what, you know, you talk to every track athlete, that's what they're trying to get. You know, when you watch Marion Jones, they say, look how relaxed she is. And I remember sprinting, I'm like, I'm so tense, tight, but now it, it just feels good. Yeah, makes a good point there. Most of us in the game obviously would love to see every player with more speed, but uh, we're not track coaches, and that isn't a part of our rhythm. But Mia took some time in the offseason to get with someone for that kind of training, and it's really, it's helped her. Went down to Arizona for some special sessions uh, with the trainer that specializes in athletes. Of course, her fiance, Nomar Garcia Parra, was also there working out to trying to work on his skills as well. But uh, it's a full-time job now for the women's international soccer stars, no doubt about that. And it's always good to see the best players continuing to work on their games as well. There's always room for improvement. Mia Hamm with the hat trick today for Washington. The Freedom looking to secure a playoff spot and also get one for Boston and Atlanta in the process. That would leave the remaining four teams eligible for the postseason battling for the fourth and final spot over the last weekend of the regular season. Trying to cause some trouble. will have a corner kick coming up. Some complacency is now sitting in naturally for the Washington Freedom. They're up three, and of course, no one has told the uh, Cyber Rays the game is over yet. So Sanchez comes off. Christina Bell checking into the game, number four in purple. And Jackie Little comes off. Meredith Beard enters the game in white for Washington. Cece will take the corner kick with the left foot. Headed in front, and Siri Mullenix has it. And Jim Guevara now, the head coach for the Washington Freedom, on the headset down on the sidelines. And uh, Jim Mia Hamm continues to impress what did you guys talk about prior to the game coming in, knowing that you had a chance to uh, wrap up a spot for the postseason? Well, we talk about three goals. One is getting in the playoffs, and that's the one that's sitting in front of us today. And the next one is uh, home field advantage, and ultimately the Founders Cup. Jim, I was very impressed with how you guys rode out their press, because they were all over you for a while, and yet uh, your team did not lose composure. And then they slowly twisted the game back. Talk about that a bit. Well, I was really disappointed in the team that we didn't go into the locker room with a 2 0 lead and really put the game out of reach. But uh, you're right, it was interesting in that, that San Jose's game plan was to put a defensive lineup out there in the first half and kind of ride the storm out and hope to keep it close, which is what they did. And uh, to put Sissy and Katya in and, and hope to steal some points here. So, you know, we've got a couple of big goals here and we can uh, address the uh, energy level with some substitution powder. All right, well, thank you very much, Jim. Thanks. Jim Guevara, the head coach for the Washington Freedom here in the 62nd minute. His team right now enjoying the 3 nothing lead. Mia Hamm scoring in the 41st minute, the 50th minute, and the 56th minute. Her first career WUSA hat trick, the second of the season for the Freedom. Abby Wambach had one earlier in the year. Of course, Abby, the player of the month in the WUSA in the month of July. She had three game-winning goals, scored six goals in six games, and had far more points than anybody else in the league now as the rain comes down a little bit harder here at RFK Stadium. Here is that duo of Wombach and Ham, the highest scoring tandem in the league. Goldiowski on the left. Her cross in front, Ham. Over the 
top. Let's revisit our Aflac trivia question of the day. Mia Hamm's 11 assists, a new Washington single season record. Who previously held that record before Mia broke it this year? And the answer would be Abby Wambach, who had 10 a year ago. The answer to our Aflac trivia question. Coach Jim Gabert was telling me before the game that he was planning on substituting, and he says that uh, Zimney is like a starting defender. He has no qualms putting her on the field, and he's also been very impressed with the energy of Meredith Florence Beard, and you can see those two players out there, and the level for the freedom has not dropped. Wombach and Hamm too much on that last touch from Abby. Where they continue to put the pressure on. Her 11 goals, second in the league. Now tied with Mia Hamm, who's got 11 on the board. They are two behind Dockney Melgren, who has 13 for Boston. Melgren had two last night. Wombach, last year's Rookie of the Year in the WUSA. The youngest of seven kids out of Rochester, New York. And a player that perhaps Anson without the WUSA would not have gotten the looks necessary to see so many of the younger players now a chance for april heinrichs the national team coach to see these young players in action against world-class talent and what they can do one of the huge challenges for a young player when she's first brought in with a full national team is to adjust the environment a lot of them obviously come in with huge talent but no confidence in that environment and trust me this environment of the wsa is the next best thing and it's helped shape the level of all kinds of players for the United States and for the foreign countries that have the privilege of having the players play in this league. Wambach has uh, risen up, uh, so has Tiffany Roberts at Carolina, Angela Cukleys at Boston. All in the mix for spots on the final U.S. roster. Of course, Mia Hamm's place was probably secured prior to the hat trick today. Charles Schwab, a proud sponsor of the WUSA, visit one of over 350 investor centers nationwide and find out how Charles Schwab and Company Incorporated can help manage your investments. Gary Moore right now fighting off an injury. The umbrellas are now out here at RFK. Just a light drizzle falling. Yeah, someone smacked her in the face, either that or the ball got her there. Let's see if we can catch what happened. Yeah, it took a skip and she tried to uh, catch it with her forehead. It probably went too low and smacked her right in the nose. Perhaps some of the moisture now that's on the turf, that one skidded up. 67th minute at RFK Stadium, Washington leading San Jose, three to nothing, the WUSA on PAX. Beth Mowens along with Anson Dorrance. San Jose is in the purple jerseys, Washington in all white. And we've got Washington again next Saturday. The Freedom will be out in Southern California to take on San Diego, four o'clock Eastern, one Pacific. And what could be a crucial matchup for San Diego to get into the playoffs and perhaps for Washington to host one of the semifinal matches. If this score stands, Washington, Boston, and Atlanta would all clinch spots in the playoffs today. Mia Hamm with the hat trick for the freedom to lead the way. And what will undoubtedly be a memorable afternoon for freedom fans that were here in attendance at RFK. with 11 goals on the season. That has put 
her back in front. The scoring department, most points in the WUSA this year. And she leapfrogs uh, back over Mon Minor and Dagny Meldrin into the top spot. but they would have to pick up some points against the top two teams in the league. They have Atlanta and Boston left on the schedule. Mullenix this time with the catch in traffic. Little to Steffi Jones. Slide play made by Betsy Barr. Now the Cyberace have numbers up. Little breaking it up defensively. Comment on Betsy Barr. She's also had a, like Carrie Mora, quietly very solid game for the Cyber Rays. for Washington. You wonder about the evolution of this extraordinary athlete, and here she is ascending to the top of the league in points. And everyone's wondering, well, you know, should the Olympics be her last event? I don't think so. I think uh, her game continued to evolve, and with the running mechanics she was telling us about, She's not losing the athleticism that always separated her when she was younger. She combined uh, the maintenance of her athletic uh, physical plant with the fact that she's becoming better and better with her experience. And uh, in my opinion, I don't think there's any reason for her to retire after the Olympics. This will be next summer in Greece where the United States will look to get back the gold medal, lost to Norway in the 2000 games in Sydney. The Norwegians and the Americans have dominated the major competitions in women's soccer in the Olympics and the World Cup over the years. Growing, coming up, Allegic will take it, Katya. Immediately triple teamed. Katya and Minner bang heads. Yeah, she's looking at her hands. That must have been Katya's head against Minner's nose. She, she probably looked at her hands to see if there was blood there. Yeah, let's take a look. Actually, no, it didn't look like. Maybe she's uh, trying to appeal to the referee. been Katia's arm Maybe that, was it. that sort of caught her in the eye when they made contact. Initially was grabbing that right eye. And Minard is down right now for Washington. Omiya Ham with a hat trick today for the Freedom. McDonald's and Powerade love to see those winning smiles. The first for Mia in the 41st minute, then in the 50th to make it 2-zip, and in the 56th with the hat-trick complete. McDonald's and Powerade love to see those winning smiles. And there are the point totals in 47 games, 24 goals. She's scoring about half in half of her games. Yeah, elbow. Yeah, Katya's left elbow caught her right in the nose. That was clear on that replay. So for the time 
being the freedom of man down with Minner getting some medical attention. French playing it into the area. Katia trying to track it down. Katia redirects, saved by Mullenix, got a piece of it. Corner kick here for San Jose. Trying to write out this 3-0 game. It might come back to haunt them if the uh, Freedom continue to play relaxed. Corner kick. Looking for Aligic's head. And a goal kick coming up for Mullenix. Look at Katya's turn here. Nice redirect by Mullenix to push it off the frame. Well, last year, her 36 points, the most in WUSA history, but the numbers have fallen off this season. And that's obviously what's hurting the Cyber Race because their defense from uh, the start of the season has been very good, and her numbers were similar. Unquestionably, they'd be in a completely different position. back to help out defensively once again. Yes. Yes. Well, get your Founders Cup 3 tickets. They are now available. Log on to WUSA.com to get your tickets to the championship game on Sunday, August 24th at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's at Torero Stadium in San Diego, California. Founders Cup 3. San Jose won it the first year. Then last year it was Carolina. And Mia Hamm comes out of the game. The hat trick today for the Freedom. Jennifer Meyer, the German international, comes on in Mia's place. So Ham's day is done, but a memorable one for the veteran. Her first career WUSA hat trick. If the score stands, it would give Washington a berth in the playoffs and would also hand Atlanta and Boston a spot. Atlanta in first place in the league. This win for the Freedom would tie them for second with Boston. But the Breakers do hold the tie break in terms of who would get home field advantage if it came down to Boston or Washington. So still some work to be done for the Freedom today. They will be on the road for their final two games at Philly and then at San Diego. Now Abby Wombat. Abby has some space. Spires and scores! Abby Wombat, way too much room, and she takes advantage to make it a 4 nothing game. possession to set Wombach free here in the middle. Great runs, a clearing run by Meredith Florence Beard. The whole defense almost separating to permit this strike into the lower left-hand corner to make it four. Abby Wombach with her 12th goal of the season. The Abby and Mia show this afternoon for the Freedom. One, now a real test for the Cyber Rays to keep it together here down the stretch. Eight. Great header by Betsy Barr for eight. in the middle of a sandwich. Looking to go over the top to Wombach. Still has a burst of speed left in her. Wombach spotting Steffi Jones. Steffi trying to head it to Casey Zimby. And now the Cyber Rays will push it the other way. Michelle French on the left flank. Venturini Hope. Back to Cece. Down. 
Zeki Jones takes it the other way. Nice speed right up the middle. Corey Bryan able to slide back there and prevent Meyer from an easy run in. As the game loses compaction, it's becoming just a series of counterattacks as neither team seems to be able to win the ball in midfield. space is being permitted now as the team's fatigue and actually also because obviously the outcome has been decided now. Substitutions. Sarah Kate Dobsinger will come on replacing Kelly Golbiowski at a fine performance in midfield today and Siri Mullenix comes out of goal and the Canadian international Nikki Wright is a rare opportunity for uh, coach Jim Gabera in a league that's so competitive as this one to permit uh, the clearing of his bench as he feels secure being up four. CC able to take it away from Knopson. Grub to Minner who has come back on. Log on to WUSA.com for live scoring, TV schedules, trivia, and all the latest news about your favorite players. Plus, don't miss the weekly player chats every Tuesday afternoon at 4 o'clock Eastern. And you can also get tickets for the WUSA Founders Cup 3 championship match now on sale on the website, WUSA.com. By the way, Beth, uh, who is uh, on the, uh, the chat this week? I believe that would be yours truly. <laughs> Yeah, what the heck? Why are you being uh, interviewed? What's going on? We're going to be talking about the playoffs. We're going to be talking about the TV side of things. And all the latest gossip from around the WUSA. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm sure a lot of the talk will be about the hat trick for Mia Hamm. We see the fruits of the labor when we're watching Mia in action. You've had a chance as her coach to watch her preparation and what she has to do so she looks so good when she's out there in a game. A lot going on behind the scenes. Well, but when you talk about the great players, it's not just their extraordinary talent that obviously all of us can see. What we don't see is the commitment they make behind the scenes, what they're doing on their own, and that's what uh, sort of took her into the stratosphere. We brought on the national team as a very young player, as a 15-year-old, and then from that day forward, the decisions that she made were decisions that sort of took her into greatness. CC with the corner. Headed out by Wombach. Played back in, Grubb gets a head on it. Legacy Foundation is the official cause of the WUSA. The WUSA supports the American Legacy Foundation in its efforts to build a world where young people reject tobacco and anyone can quit. Atlanta with 33 points, Boston with 31. This win for Washington would get them to 31 as well. And then the race would be on for the fourth and final playoff spot. San Diego could eliminate New York with a win tomorrow against Carolina. But San Diego, New York, San Jose, and Carolina all still with aspirations and a chance mathematically to get in to that fourth position. But uh, a lot of eyes on San Diego with the Carolina game tomorrow and then against Washington next week. A lot of the activity will run through Torero Stadium, fittingly enough, since that's where the Founders' Cup will end up as well. On August 24th. Semi-final action will be on the 17th and 18th. The first and second place teams in the league will host the third and fourth place squads. 
look at uh, Wombach still running herself to death. Outcome has been decided. But her professionalism, she's still working extremely hard. This is one of those games for the Cyber Rays. You just almost don't want to finish playing. Uh, they're down four. They, they won't get back in it. They've got uh, the bench cleared for the Washington Freedoms here, playing against these players that are dying to run around. And actually, some of them have done very well. Jennifer Meyer has done some good things on the ball. but not able to keep it in play. As part of Legacy Circle of Friends program, the WUSA stands with women who are trying to quit smoking and will make a donation to Legacy for every goal scored during the season. Mia Hamm doing her part with the hat trick today for Washington. Abby Wambach with the fourth goal of the day. It's been all freedom. Jeff dropped it very well to read that pass, cut it off, and now she is a one-woman counterattack. Midfield again. Three goal outburst in the second half by Washington. Putting this one away. Jones. Bean got just enough of that one to slow it down and make the play. Excellent strike by Steffi Jones from about 30. Freedom continue to dominate. 12 to 8 in shots for the Freedom. Later tonight, Atlanta will be at Philadelphia. Of course, uh, Atlanta's Cindy Parlow and Maribel Dominguez, a couple of other players with hat tricks this year. So. Atlanta and Washington now with two players that have scored three goals in a game on the season. Charmaine Hooper has never scored against Philadelphia, the only team she has not scored a goal against. We saw Tiffany Milbert break the spell that she had uh, scoring against San Diego a couple of weeks ago for her first goal against the Spirit. She has now scored on every team in the league. And tomorrow at 5 Pacific time, San Diego will be hosting Carolina. San Diego has done a nice job on bearded prints over the course of the history of that rivalry, keeping her relatively quiet. Of course, Nell Fettig got the game-winning goal a couple of weeks ago when those two teams met in Cary, North Carolina. Illegal throw-in, which you don't see much anymore. No. In the 88th minute here at RFK Stadium, the rain has stopped after a brief appearance in the second half. Oh my gosh, that's minutes leg. That was about 60 yards. They'll get the corner kick. Excellent. 
excellent tackle there by Michelle French. They're not done yet, though. The corner kick. Wombach's out there. Steffi Jones is moving up. Minner is moving up as the heavy artillery gets into the attacking box. They don't get a chance to get ahead on it. Nice composure. Zimney to Jones, back to Casey Zimney. Using the lap, looking far post. Knocked down in front. Abby Wong back with her second strike of the game. 5-0 freedom. Zimney on a great run down the left flank. The energy of the fresh legs. Gets in behind Alagic. Ball is bent beautifully back post. Redirected somewhat unorthodox. But still well finished by Wombach. Boy, she cleaned it up nicely, and Abby buries it in the back of the net. Ham with three goals today. Abby Wombach with two. A dominating performance today. And the most dominating victory in Freedom history. If they hold on here, five zip. And all the duels now are being won in the clinches. Just a moment ago, the left midfielder, Sarah Kate Knopfsinger, just sliding in to hold possession for her teammates. Again, one of the huge advantages of being able to clear your bench and get fresh legs in. And again, let's face it, uh, the Cyber Racers want this game to end. San Jose will head back home for its final two games against Atlanta and Boston. still on for home field advantage in the WUSA playoffs. Three of the teams are in. San Diego, Carolina, New York, and San Jose will now battle for the fourth and final spot. And Washington, Anson, after struggling through June, now will have the momentum. And it's a final. Abby Wambach with two goals. Mia Hamm with the hat trick to lead the way for Washington. And we'll be back to RFK Stadium after this. Honey, wipe your face. Stains just aren't a big problem with the Maytag Neptune. Features like Stain Brain take the guesswork out of stain removal. And the Turbo Clean Wash System powers out tough stains. Right now, save up to $150 on Maytag washers. There's never been a better time to buy the longest lasting brand of washers available. Visit Maytag.com to find a dealer near you. Maytag, depend on us. This is why they practice. This is why they play. This is why eight WUSA teams battle for 22 weeks for a spot in the playoffs. And this is why we cheer them on. It's the championship game, the Founders Cup 3, and it's coming to San Diego. Be part of the action as the top two teams in the WUSA battle for the coveted Founders Cup. Sunday, August 24th at 1 p.m. at Torero Stadium. Get your tickets now by calling Ticketmaster or log on to WUSA.com. Founders Cup 3. Be there. Well, when I got hurt in this work, I was glad I had supplemental insurance. Supplemental insurance? What's that? Aflac. Well, even best insurance doesn't give you cash to cover things like lost pay, other expenses. This does. What does? 
Affleck. Shouldn't ask about it at work. Really? And what's it called? Affleck! Affleck. Ask about it at work. Affleck. Nothing. Washington, a winner over San Jose. Mia Hamm with a hat trick today, and she is now joining us down on the headset. Hey. Hey, Mia, listen, unbelievable hat trick, and here you were telling me that uh, the Olympics might be your last performance, mm -hmm. and yet I'm watching you run past people. What a great performance. Tell me how you feel right now and where your game is. Well, I think as a team, we're excited. We, we knew that uh, if we won and got the three points today, we were into the playoffs, which was our first of three goals. And um, the team... You know, despite the fact I don't think we played that great in the first half, and we talked about that at halftime, they came out and rededicated themselves. And I thought our defense was unbelievable today. Um, you know, those guys in midfield continued to hold the ball in the second half. And, you know, Abby just works her butt off, and, and you saw that again today. Well, congratulations on the win and the hat trick and uh, working so well together with Abby Wambach. Mia Hamm and the Washington Freedom. Thank you so much, Mia. Yeah, thanks. Into the playoffs, as are Atlanta and Boston as a result of the Freedom's win today. One spot remains. Today's play of the game brought to you by Maytag, and no surprise, Mia Hamm, this is her third of three goals on the day, running around a defender and beating Lakeisha Bean for the score. The play of the game brought to you by Maytag. Depend on us. And the final regular season home game here at RFK. The Washington Freedom hoping they'll have a playoff game here at home as well. Still some work to be done. They are tied with Boston for second place behind Atlanta right now in the WUSA, but they are all into the postseason. Well, this is an exciting period, and I think uh, for the Freedom especially, remember we talked earlier about the depth of Atlanta and Washington? Well, we're seeing that now, and uh, off the air, Mia was telling us about their depth, and I'll tell you. They play with passion, score with skill, and Julie Foudy and Joy Fawcett would feel right at home playing for the championship. The Washington Freedom are headed to the playoffs as well, advancing to the final a year ago. Mia Hamm wants to go one step further this time with powerful partner Abby Wambach. The Freedom are searching for that elusive Founders Cup. Today, both teams hope to generate some playoff momentum next. Southern California, Julie Fouting and the San Diego Spirit headed to the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. Today, their season finale against Washington. We know the four teams that are in the playoffs. We just don't know the seating as of yet. The winner of today's matchup, however, will clinch third place in the standings. Hi, and welcome to Torero Stadium in San Diego. I'm Beth Mullins, along with Lori Walker, who is the head coach at The Ohio State University. And Lori, even though we do know the four teams that are in, still plenty to play for this afternoon. Well, many of the fans might think this game has no significance. The reality is there's a tremendous amount of significance. Both of these teams could meet in the championship game. You talk to the coaches, you talk to the players, they want to win today and finish in third place. And one of the reasons for both these teams' success has been the dynamic scoring tandems that they put up top. Absolutely. We've got Mia Hamm, obviously, along with Abby Wambach for the Washington Freedom. Mia Hamm on top of her game right now, playing the best we've seen her in many years, scoring there, along with then Abby Wambach. Her size, her speed, her ability to find the back of the net with her head is unparalleled. And on the other side, the impressive international youngsters for San Diego. Julie Fleeting has done a fantastic job in the air, maybe one of the best as far as her timing goes, and then Latham as well, possibly the goal of the year here, combining to come out through the midfield. They both stand at five foot nine. Tremendous, tremendous job to try and defend both of these players with that kind of size. And giving us insight into their play will be their teammate, Allie Wagner. She is wearing the microphone for us today on Turf Talk. Chugger, chugger, woo -hoo. I do like playing on national television, I'm not gonna lie. Hey, so did you get it? Maybe. Well, did they have it? I got the last copy. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll be right there. Okay. Continuous Control Acne Cleanser from Clean and Clear fights breakouts two ways. First, it washes away dirt and oil. Then it leaves invisible acne medicine deep in your pores. We got the whole first season. So you're still fighting breakouts long after you wash. Continuous Control Acne Cleanser. Clean and clear and under control. It's the winning season for the Hyundai Sonata. Ranked most appealing entry midsize car by J.D. Power & Associates. Protected by America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. $2,100 less than a Toyota Camry when comparably equipped. And now, get an extra $1,000 cash back. The Hyundai Sonata starting at just $15,839 after $1,000 cash back. You're the winner at the Hyundai winning season clearance. Going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Hey, back on your feet after all that work you missed. Yeah, it's a good thing my supplemental insurance kicked in. Supple what? Half flat. Well, even the best health insurance doesn't give you cash to cover things like lost pay or other expenses. This does. What does? Half flat. Oh, sorry, buddy. What? Anyway, ask about it at work. Half flat. Ask about it at work. Ask about what? Half flat. If there's one thing we've learned in over a hundred years, it's that it all comes out in the wash. Maytag. Depend on us. For this, I call it the super slammer. Don't get grandma. Skip to my loo. Scoot the legs behind the back. Chocolate sun attack. Gorilla head turning. Body chilling. What you feeling? Ah! Horizontal monumental turbo power magical rim wreck. Yeah, brought to you by Hyundai. Hyundai reminds you when you get everything you want at Standard, you win. By the U.S. Soccer Foundation, proud to support the WUSA. By Aflac, ask about it at work. And by Maytag, depend on us. Torero Stadium in San Diego. A hot day in Southern California, 82 degrees. The field conditions, it's dry and the field soft. As we head into today's matchup and the starting lineup brought to you by Clean and Clear for Washington. Kelly Golbiowski on the left side, the Australian international, is the youngest in league history to score a goal. Okay, today I'll be playing in the midfield, um, in defense for the freedom. I help um, keep us compact and work with the back line in the midfield. And in attack, I give us some width and help the strikers up front. And the Clean and Clear.